Hi guys, welcome back to another video at Jensen's Reptiles. Uh, today I would like to say a big thank you to Michelle uh, for requesting this video. And we're going to be talking about a complete care guide for boa constrictors. So this is the enclosure for my boa constrictor, Zeke. He's actually over in his hide at the other end. So what we'll do is we'll start talking about uh, where boa constrictors come from. So they originate in Central and South America. So when we're looking at uh, housing them, we want to replicate the conditions there. So Central and South America is enormous. So we can't just replicate kind of an entire condition because there's rainforest, there's desert, kind of everything in between. So what we're looking at is more the tropical side of things. So kind of warm and humid, but not overly tropical. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. Uh, boa constrictors themselves average between five and nine feet. So for a fully grown male, between five and six foot is the norm. Uh, for a fully grown female, we're looking to eight to nine foot, but a lot can get bigger depending on their locale. Um, my Zeke, for example, is almost eight feet long now, and as a male, that's a lot larger than we'd expect. Um, but I don't know his full background because he's a rescue, so I'm not sure of his origins or his parentage or anything like that. So um, with Zeke, it would just be a bit of a waiting game to see when he starts to slow down growing because he's seven years old and he's still growing uh, fairly quickly. So as long with, uh, as well as getting quite big, boa constrictors also live for quite a long time. So we're looking at 25 to 30 years. Uh, some live longer, some don't live as long um, for a variety of different reasons. Um, one thing to consider before getting a boa constrictor is remembering how long you will need to keep your animal happy and healthy for. Uh, these are big snakes that require a lot of space, a lot of time and effort that goes into cleaning if you want to keep them properly. So if you're young and you're still living at home, please make sure your parents are aware of that before helping you to get a boa. Um, because they, mean, they may need to be the ones looking after them should you move out. If you go to university or uh, you get a job and you want to leave home but you don't have enough space for your animal. Um, these are all things to consider before getting a snake because the last thing you want is to have to give them up. Um, Zeke came to me as a rescue, so did quite a few of the other animals I have here, and a good handful of them were due to that, young people leaving home and their parents not quite knowing how to look after their animal. So as long as you and your family are prepared for that commitment, that's fantastic. It's really awesome to see so many young people getting interested in reptiles and keeping them for themselves. If you're older, like me, and you have your own place, then all you need to consider is making sure that you can provide the right amount of space for your pet. So what we'll do in a sec is we'll talk about the enclosure requirements for the snake. So looking at Zeke's enclosure here, it is eight feet long, two feet deep and two feet high. Now, when I moved him into this enclosure, he was about six feet long. So six feet with an eight foot tank didn't seem very cramped. It seemed quite spacious for him. Uh, what's actually happened over the last year is that Zeke has had two fairly large growth spurts and he is now approaching the full length of this enclosure. Um, so Zeke will need a bigger enclosure at some point, which will mean building him uh, most likely a 10 or 12 foot enclosure. Um, now, the reason I'm talking about this is because when you get a baby boa, you think, oh, well, the average is five to nine feet, I'll get a male, maybe they'll max out at six or seven feet, which is fine, I can do an eight foot enclosure. Um, maybe you get a snake like Zeke, who doesn't seem to stop growing, and he's the anomaly, but I have to be prepared for that. So um, building Zeke a larger enclosure is gonna be a priority over the next couple of years. Currently he's doing okay, um, but it's gonna be one of those things where he will need more space. Another thing to consider is that boas are really good at climbing. Um, I get Zeke out so that he can climb because the enclosure is not quite tall enough for him to do that in here. Um, when he gets his new enclosure, it'll most likely be 12 foot long, three foot deep and four feet high so that he'll have a little bit more space to climb. Because he's so heavy bodied, uh, putting a structure in there for him to climb on is actually a little tricky because I want it to look natural. So using kind of a fallen tree like this is great. Um, but making sure they stand upright is a different matter. So anyone who's been following my channel for a little while will know that I previously had uh, two uprights. So there was one about here and one a bit further along going up. Now for a six foot snake, 
that was fine because uh, they had some forks in them, he could climb through them. Uh, as he got bigger, they actually took up a bit too much of his floor space and um, he couldn't fit through the forks anymore. And further to that, they got soot mold, which was just an absolute pain. So rather than leaving in there and trying to treat them, we just took them out, gave him some extra floor space. And we're now just looking at uh, what we can do for him going forward to make sure he has a really great life, fully enriched with a great enclosure. Um, but yeah, so for the time being, he's in an enclosure that, that isn't too small for him, but could be better. So when you are looking at kind of providing an enclosure for your boa as a baby, just bear in mind, they do grow. It, they are quite slow growers, to be fair. Um, but be prepared kind of to double that space just, just in case you need to. Um, one thing I will say, I'm bound to get a lot of comments asking where I got this enclosure from. Uh, and I won't go into too many details here, but sadly the company was absolutely horrific. Um, the worst customer service I've ever experienced, so I won't be recommending them. Um, so if you do ask in the comments, I won't be replying. So I, I do apologize for that. I'd love to chat with you guys. Um, but I get asked that question far too much and I won't be recommending that company, I'm afraid. Um, but there are other brilliant companies online where you can either get custom vivs made or you can kind of uh, build them yourself. Um, so next up, we will talk about uh, temperature and humidity. So let's chat about temperature first. I like to use uh, ceramic heaters to heat Zeke's enclosure. These are 150 watt white python ceramic heaters with guard over. You need to use a guard when you're providing your snake with any kind of heat so they don't burn themselves. Uh, I like to use heat from above for my snakes. It's more natural than using um, a heat mat, which can really do them some damage, especially with a large bodied snake. Um, but as you can imagine with an enclosure like this, it's, it's eight feet long and one kind of 150 ceramic heater isn't gonna do the full job. So I have two. Um, they're both on their own individual stats, so I can control the temperature throughout the tank and force a temperature gradient. So over here, we're looking at kind of a basking temperature. There's about 35 degrees on top of his hide, 32 degrees inside his hide with kind of a area ending here at about 30 degrees. That's when this uh, ceramic here kicks into action, which is maintaining a temperature of between 26 and 28 here. And then that fades down over to the cooler end, down to 24 degrees. So throughout Zeke's enclosure, he has a 10 degree, uh, in Celsius, 10 degree temperature gradient. Um, if you can hear my cat in the background, by the way, he is crying outside the door because he wants to be involved, but um, he can't while this enclosure is open. Uh, so I do apologize if you can hear him moaning. Um, so we've discussed temperature, so we've got a great temperature gradient, something that you can only really achieve properly with heat coming from above or from the side. Uh, you can buy an AHS unit as well if you want to, or you can use reptile radiators to kind of make that gradient. Um, the reason I prefer ceramics is because I can put them on a pulse stat, and then um, I'm not using too much electricity, because they're quite efficient, so that's why I like to use those. Um, now let's talk about humidity. So... For a boa constrictor, we're looking to have a humidity above 60%. So we're thinking about rainforest, we're thinking about forest floor. Um, they like to be kind of pretty much where Zeke is now. Hunkered down under some logs, in some rocks, um, or just pushed down into leaf litter, which is fairly humid. Now I'm not talking about damp. The last thing you want is to grab kind of piles of your enclosure and have like moisture come out. So you can see actually here it's quite dry. So what I do is I spray down the cooler end of the enclosure so that as the temperature hits it, humidity is dispersed slowly throughout. Uh, we spray these enclosures down every three days if they need to be, um, but getting a good hygrometer is key. Uh, I like to use the white python hygrometers. Um, they don't have a cord so you can kind of move them about wherever you want to. The problem is you have to take them out when you're spraying down, otherwise they get waterlogged and they break. Um, obviously with a big snake like this as well, Zeke likes to um, bury his from time to time, so you do have to go fishing through the substrate to find it. Uh, so one thing I have found is buying uh, hygrometers off eBay with a probe on them. Um, I've not had an issue with those, so I'd highly recommend. They only cost about a pound fifty. Um, 
But again, one word of warning, when you are spraying the enclosure down, just hold the probe in your hand so it doesn't get waterlogged and then put it back in and you'll get a more accurate reading. So Zeke's humidity sits between 60 and 70%. Uh, you don't want it to go any higher than 80 for a prolonged period of time. 80 is absolutely plenty. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about kind of the health complications you can get from it going higher than that in just a moment. So the next thing we're going to talk about is lighting. So you can see running along the front of this enclosure here, I've got some LED strips. And over at the other side, I've got some green ones in there for that jungly effect. That is just for me, Zeke probably couldn't care less. Um, but the reason we've done it is because it actually makes that side of the enclosure look a little bit darker. Um, finding hides for large snakes can be difficult. So instead, we created kind of some barriers using the artificial greenery um, and dimmer lighting. So he quite likes just chilling out down there. As a big snake, he's fairly confident anyway, but um, gauge how your snake is before you decide what you're gonna provide them with as far as hides go. The standard is to have at least two hides, one on either end. Um, I like to use things like this in the middle as well that he can go under. Um, so along with the LED lighting, which is essentially provide, to provide this daylight cycle. So we're saying to the snake, it's daytime now, go and sleep. When the light goes off, Right, it's night time, there's potential for food, um, it's time to get more active, and he knows that because of the lighting. Um, if you keep a snake in a dark box and you never show them daylight or real darkness, they're going to get very confused about when food is coming, and most, in most cases, the snake can tend to be a little bit more defensive in those situations because they're just unsure about what's going on, really. Um, the other thing I like to provide lighting-wise is a UV lamp. So you can see in here, this is an uh, Arcadia 6% compact UV in their floodlight bracket. Um, now, I like to provide Zeke with a UV basking spot um, and he can just kind of sit around here and soak up some UV rays, which he does frequently. And the UV is on for just four hours a day, so between 12 and 4 p.m. Um, I don't provide my snakes with UV strip lighting purely because um, until about a week ago, Novi had made a proper guard for them. And if your snake climbs up, wraps around the bulb and pulls it down, you've got glass everywhere and potentially an uh, injured animal, so it's not worth the risk. Um, but getting one of these is great. Um, and Zeke does like to try and wedge himself in there, but you can adjust it on the bracket so it will kind of tilt depending on where you want it. Um, so yeah, I like to make sure he's got a bit of UV. They are a great snakes at climbing. Um, they will often seek out natural light in the wild because they spend so much time down on the forest floor. There are those times when they just want to climb up a little bit further uh, into a nice patch of sunlight and just bask. So I want, want to replicate that as much as I can for him in here. So just quickly while we're talking about hides and how tricky it can be to find the right size, um, while your burrow is smaller, you'll definitely be able to find kind of um, the standard snake equipment where hides fit and everything's great. Then there comes a day where you see your burrow in their hide and every time they breathe, the hide breathes with them because it just doesn't quite fit anymore. At that point, you're probably on the largest side, uh, size your pet shop offered and you're starting to think about what you can offer your snake next. I've seen some really ingenious things happen at this point where people make their own hides or they go to using really natural things like um, like bits of bark like this or you know pieces of cork or cork tunnels, whatever it is. Um, and that's that's absolutely fantastic. So definitely using that ingenuity to, to figure out what you can give to your snake. Um, Pro Rep have just released kind of large snake equipment. So larger hides and I think a really large water bowl as well, which is brilliant. Um, I use quite a uh, standard size bowl for Zeke, uh, purely because he doesn't seem to enjoy soaking that much, um, but he does get a bath every now and then. So um, until I get him that really large enclosure, that's what he's got for the time being and I'll look into a kind of bigger lagoon for him in the future. Um, as far as hides go though, this is actually a pond filter cover. So, it's funny because they're designed to look really natural because they're for people to put over their pond filters to make them look really natural outside. Um, 
But we were looking at it online and thinking it would make a really wonderful size um, hide physique. And he fits inside it perfectly, as you can see. Um, there's still quite a lot of space above him. It's his face over there. Um, and he fills it pretty much on the floor, but he has a bit of room to grow. The cool thing about this is that this is the smallest size. There's one that's double the size. So I don't think Zika's gonna grow a huge amount more. Uh, he'll probably grow a little bit more, but not colossally, I hope anyway. Um, so the next size up should be perfect for him as he gets a bit bigger. So these are a great option. You can get them in almost any pond uh, supply website. Uh, we just ordered this online and it came two days later. So uh, check them out and see if it might work for you. Um, it's done a great job for Zeke. Okay, so next up we're going to talk a little bit about feeding frequency and what to feed. So for a young hatchling, you're going to want to feed every five days. Now this doesn't last very long because boas grow quite quickly when they're small and then they slow down a bit. So for those first uh, couple months, every five days is great. As your boa starts to grow a little bit more and becomes a juvenile, we're looking at every seven to 10 days. Now boas have a really slow metabolism, so as much as they love their food and they really are kind of the disposal unit of the reptile room, they will eat any leftovers. It's not ideal to keep feeding them because their metabolism is so slow. They have a tendency to put on fat quite quickly. So what you wanna do is keep your snake fit and active and feed less frequently and you're gonna have a muscular, healthy animal. Now they're moving out of juvenile and they're going into young adult here. They've definitely not reached what looks like a maximum size, um, but they are uh, looking quite large and they're older. So every two weeks, every 14 days is plenty. Um, now saying these days and these numbers, um, we also need to be looking at what you're feeding. So. Yeah, a boa can take down something quite large, and they can definitely take something down that's uh, wider than they are, but that's not ideal. It puts too much stress on the internal organs, it puts too much stress on the skeletal structure, so instead you want to feed them something um, that is no larger than their width at their widest point. So for Zeke, as long as he is, he's not a, you know, a really chunky snake, so he still has uh, jumbo rats and the occasional small guinea pig. Um, definitely not rabbits, and I can't foresee him ever taking a rabbit down, uh, purely because it, it would just be too much pressure on his body, and it's completely unnecessary when I'm feeding him frequently. Um, so we've covered young adult being fed every two weeks. Now, adult. So this is the point where you're looking at your snake thinking, right, you've really slowed down in your growth, um, you're looking fit and muscular and healthy, now I can feed every two weeks or every three weeks. I feed Zeke every three weeks. Um, because of how uh, his metabolism works, feeding him more frequently uh, tends to make him a little bit more edgy. Um, whereas actually feeding him every three weeks means that we have enough downtime um, that handling him is a breeze and he's very relaxed most of the time and he's certainly not wanting for food. He's in, he's in perfect condition. Uh, any more than that, he'd most likely start to gain weight quite quickly. Um, for a senior snake, there's no reason to feed them any less frequently than three weeks, uh, but there's certainly no reason to feed them more frequently than that. They've usually slowed down a little bit, and I'm talking about a snake in their 20s here, nothing in their teens. Um, at this point, they are probably a little bit more chill than they were in their younger years. Um, but gauge it on your animal. I would say every three weeks for an adult boa and over is more than enough food. And um, staying on, on rats and, and small guinea pigs and you know, maybe the occasional quail is uh, enough variety for them to uh, be fit and healthy. Of course, when they're younger, if, if you want to feed them um, some, some mice in there as well while they're small, variety is, is a wonderful thing. So uh, you can definitely mix it up. Uh, my advice would just to not be to overfeed them, uh, to make them grow because it puts too much pressure on the heart. And... Um, You'll have a large snake, but they just won't live that long, and that's that's a crying shame. So, uh, grow them, grow them nice and slowly, whilst making sure that they they're well fed and they're happy, and you'll have a happy snake on your hands. Seeing as Zeke has been so antisocial today, I'm going to show some photos of him at the end of the video, so you can see what he looks like. Um, but I just quickly wanted to touch on some kind of health issues that can happen with boas. Some of these are more common than others. 
um, so I don't want to panic anybody, but it's good to know kind of the signs that you would need to look out for. Um, so let's start over here with scale rot. Scale rot is very easy to spot. Um, don't mistake it for your snake going into shed and having a pink belly. Uh, you will see raised scales, you will see a very angry red colour, and in the later stages you'll also see a lot of browning around the tips of the scales. Um, you want to monitor your humidity well to avoid that. Um, but also monitor kind of where your snake is sitting, uh, making sure that their enclosure is clean so there's not a bacteria buildup, and you should be able to avoid that quite nicely. Um, moving on to your respiratory infections, again linked to humidity. It can mean your humidity is too low or too high. It all can also mean there's a buildup of bacteria in the enclosure, meaning that as your snake was breathing in this humid air, uh, the bacteria was uh, carried nicely into the lungs and was causing a problem. Uh, to spot this, you'll see uh, some bubbling around the mouth in the later stages, but in early stages, it will be characterized by a slight wheezing. Um, and it is very slight to begin with, like a tiny little whistle. Um, it can also be due to uh, stuck shed in the nostrils, but if you are worried, please do go to your vet. Um, we'll move on to mites next. Now mites can be brought in from a uh, decor that you've brought in from outside or in the uh, substrate you use in your enclosure. Um, it's not a reason not to have a natural enclosure. I see a lot of people saying, oh, I use paper towel because, you know, I want to avoid having mites. Um, yep, that's all well and good, but it's not enriching for your animal. Um, so if you want to, you can put some uh, taurus mites into the enclosure. These are predatory and will eat snake mites in every uh, stage of their of their life and then when you do your enclosure clean out you clean out everything and you just top up again um, or you can use uh, kind of have a bioactive enclosure which is uh, not completely self-cleaning for a boa constrictor because it takes a bit too long but it'll definitely help you keep uh, bacteria levels to a low and it'll tackle these mites as well um, the next thing I want to talk about is nose rub so nose rub is an interesting one uh, during breeding season, your boa may look like it's trying to escape the enclosure by rubbing their nose along every edge. So that can be along these runners, up the sides of the enclosure. And if you have a middle bar like I do here, they can also run their nose along that, which is why mine has some foam around it. Uh, this is not a permanent solution. This is something to stop Zeke while he's kind of in that mood. Um, but I'll be looking for something that I can put onto those edges to make them smoother. Because what he does is he sticks his nose in here and runs it along. And it has actually split his nose open before. Which is really awful. And then of course you want to keep it nice and clean. Uh, make sure that you put a barrier ointment on that wound. Um, Zeke's healed nice and quickly. Uh, but now with that foam, he can't do it anymore. Um, so it's one of those boa things. They tend to do it a lot. Uh... Giving them more space will help, but it can be really, um, it's kind of sad to see them do it. Uh, and it's usually just because they want to breed. So taking them out of the enclosure, having that enrichment time where they just get worn out really, tire them down, they'll go back and they'll most likely go to sleep. Um, so yeah, just pay a bit more attention to your snake during that time so they're not getting too frustrated. Uh, absolutely, last one I wanted to touch on, and it's probably the most serious uh, thing that can happen to a boa constrictor. Um, but it's also very rare, so I don't want anyone panicking over it. Um, IBD um, is inclusion body disease. So we're looking at a, um, a virus that causes the snake to um, have head tremors, they'll shed really badly, uh, a whole load of complications which um, will sadly lead to death in almost every case. Um, it can spread very quickly throughout a collection, so if you do see your bo your boa behaving strangely in any way whatsoever, just go straight to your vet. Uh, it's worth giving them a call beforehand to let them know what's going on, and they'll decide the best thing to do. Um, none of this information that I'm giving you today replaces uh, speaking to a veterinary professional about anything you're worried about with your snake. So as much as I love to help, please don't come to me with uh, health issues. Um, I'm, I'm not a vet. I can give you advice, uh, but I can't replace that uh, veterinary advice in any way whatsoever. Um, so I hope that's been helpful. Do let me know if you've got any uh, questions. Uh, just post them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. 
Uh, big thanks again to Michelle for requesting this video. Uh, if you guys have any other requests, just let me know and I'll get around to them as soon as I can. Um, and as I said, I'll post some, uh, some pictures of Zeke now so you can see him. Cheers, guys. I hope you're all having a great day and I will see you soon.